Hey artists, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing some ways that art can actually make you feel better. So life has its ways of getting us down now and then, and it's no surprise to anyone that 2020 has just been an experience, let's just put it that way, and it has left a lot of people feeling really lost, really stressed out, and just experiencing a lot of really negative emotions. And I am definitely one of those. The world is very crazy and stressful right now, and a lot has happened. But we artists have a really powerful tool at our disposal for actually processing these negative emotions, all of this crazy stuff that's going on in the world, and turning that into something beautiful. So I wanted to share some of my favorite ways that I have used my art to make me feel better. So the first way that I use my artwork to make me feel better is actually to scribble. Now, this can be you grabbing a pencil, a marker, a paintbrush, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. But there's something so cathartic about the act of scribbling down and especially if you were consciously pouring energy and emotions into that activity, it can be super cathartic. And you're gonna feel a lot of energy lift off you, and that's gonna give you the space to be able to process some of these negative emotions and ultimately feel better. So whenever I'm feeling particularly overwhelmed, I usually go open up a new page of my sketchbook or open up a new canvas and scribble. And one of the, something I've actually loved to do in the past is, yeah, take out a new blank white canvas and scribble something on it with paint, get real messy with it, just let your emotions kind of run through you. Don't try to actually create anything, but then use that as a base for a painting. You can try and turn that scribble into something or just embrace the chaos paint on top of it, you can completely obscure it, or you can try and work that scribble into your artwork. So the next way that I use art to make myself feel better is by creating artwork and then destroying it. I know, it's kind of scary, but I've done this multiple times in the past and it is, it is definitely cathartic, much like the scribbling, but there's just some times where if you let yourself get really raw and really emotional and you pour those emotions into that artwork, it doesn't matter what it is, sometimes that artwork can still hold on to a lot of that negative emotion for you. And even down the road, you might look at that and feel that swell of negative emotions again. And we, don't want to necessarily revisit those negative emotions. So what you can do is you can channel all of that energy, that, you know, energy that you want to burn off and replace with a more positive energy. You can release that into a painting or a piece of artwork and then destroy it. You can rip it up, you can set it on fire, you can even let it dry and then you can prime back over it and use it as a base for a new painting. You can give it a new life. So the next way that you can use artwork to make yourself feel better is to consciously channel those emotions that you are feeling into your artwork. So it is important to understand that your negative feelings and emotions are not necessarily a bad thing. Now, I'm not going to jump into too much mindset stuff here, but in a sense, life is about balance. You can't feel the highs of your life without knowing the lows. And so that makes you understand that sometimes negative emotions are actually an important part of life. And it becomes a much more healthy practice if we work our way through them rather than just pushing them aside and saying, nope, they don't exist. That's gonna form some really uh, negative and unnecessary habits for you that ultimately are not gonna be the healthiest. Sometimes, for instance, if I'm feeling a lot of anger and that sort of fiery energy, I actually match my color palette to it. So I'll use a lot of blacks and reds and oranges, creating a really fiery sort of palette. 
and letting that energy kind of course through me. I'm channeling it into my artwork and you'd be surprised at how good this feels sometimes. Or on the other hand, if you want to end up calming that energy, so say you're still dealing with that anger, rather than letting it run its course through your artwork, you could purposely make your palette a lot more calming. So say you use a lot of blues, nice gentle greens, you can chill yourself out that way as well. Another way that you can use artwork to make yourself feel better is to use your art to shine a light on the things that light you up and make you feel joy. If something is a source of happiness in your life right now, then create art of it or create art that embraces the spirit of whatever that thing is making you happy. For instance, if your dog is the only thing that is bringing you joy in your life right now, well, paint portraits of that beautiful little pup and focusing on that thing that is bringing you joy is just going to add more joy to your life. And that's a beautiful thing. Plus that artwork that you create of that thing that brings you joy, every time you look at it again, if you frame it and hang it up in your own home, that is also going to add more joy and light to your life. So another way that I like to use artwork to make myself feel better is by slowing down and actually focusing on the physical sensations of creating artwork. So this is definitely a bit of a mindset trick for me. If I'm feeling very overwhelmed, slowing myself down and focusing on exactly what I'm doing, thinking about the physical sensations that I am experiencing, but also the mental and emotional experiences, this is a really, really great way to ground yourself and find a happier and more content place in your heart. So you can slow yourself down, pay attention to the way that your brush grips on the canvas texture as you were creating. You can test out the sensation of standing up while painting versus sitting down. You can actually focus on how buttery the oil paint is as you're mixing these beautiful colors that maybe they remind you of the ocean and that makes you feel happy. Focus on the sensation of that and also what it does to your mind and your emotions. Another useful tool that I tend to pair with creating artwork, especially when I'm trying to make myself feel better, is journaling. I personally write a lot and it's a really great healthy way to help me deal with what's going on inside my head. And you can actually focus, for instance, on how your artwork makes you feel. Maybe the process of detailing stresses you out, but you really, really love creating the underpainting. Well, that might be a sign that it's time to shift up your art style a little bit. Rather than working in such clear layers like that, where your entire last layer of detailing stresses you out, try working in a more a la prima method where you're working those details into that beautiful underpainting and it's going to make your experience creating artwork a lot better. So the last way that I wanna talk about that you can use your art to make you feel better is to remove expectations and reduce your judgment towards yourself when you are creating artwork. So art can have different purposes when it comes to you creating it. And sometimes processing emotions can be a purpose of the art creation process. And in this time, at least this is how I have experienced things, Sometimes the artwork that you create when you are super emotional, especially if you were consciously using artwork as a tool to process those emotions, you might not create your best masterpiece and that's okay. So reduce the amount of expectations that you place on yourself and instead focus on what that artwork is doing for you. So those are some of my favorite ways that you can actually use art and your art practice to make yourself feel better. And especially with the given state of the world, I think keeping these tips in mind is going to be super valuable for making yourself feel better and just spreading more joy. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Do you dream of painting realistic wildlife, but you just, you don't know where to begin? 
then consider this your personal invitation into the Wildlife Painting Academy. Get access to a large library of real-time, in-depth tutorials, and learn how to paint your favorite animals easily. Check it out in the link of the description of this video.